we haven't tried to stage manage it. Yeah. There will be people here who you'll meet over the course of the day who aren't just solely on message. We thought you would want to hear a range of different voices. We try to be as open as we possibly can about what's going on. Sure. This report has to be local. Your needs, your challenges are different than Hartlepool, where we were in the North East. It's completely different than they are in the, in the North West of England. So it's the opportunity to design things locally. The concept of actually enabling and allowing local solutions against a general thrust, a general direction, is absolutely right. The atmosphere here isn't reflected around the country, and a lot of my colleagues are very concerned about the us and them atmosphere between their local PCT and the Trust. It seems to me that's you're absolutely right and one of the things that we are very keen to do is when we've gone through the discussion with you about clinical models and about how they might work is we need then to look at what these big national levers are and make sure that they support what we're trying to do. There's a great deal that can be done at a national level through the Centre for Innovation and Improvement, through the King's Fund, applying that knowledge more effectively where it's needed, not in London, but actually at the ground, on the ground, where we're practicing it. The biggest challenge is to make things happen in the NHS, and uh, I think, you know, to be fair to David and I, if we are putting our heart and soul in this for the next year to make this happen, you know, it would be a lost opportunity if we don't make this happen. Let me just explain to you a few things about the review. First of all, it is not my review, it is your review. So the whole purpose of this review is essentially re-engage the staff in describing what do we mean by care and quality of care as we move on into the next decade. You know, if you want to change the future, design what you want to do, then you have to engage. If you don't, someone else will do it. What time do you close at night? 10 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock, fantastic. Hi, Hi nice Very nice to meet you. Hello. These two good ladies are two of our team of emergency nurse practitioners. We do try and just see minor injuries, obviously. We have to um, sometimes refer people on to the main hospitals, in, the main hospital in Oxford. How many x-rays do you take a day? About 40. 40 a day? Yeah, increasing, yeah. The thing that strikes you about it, wherever we've been, you know, people really do want to do something, you know, they're really quite resilient for it. Yeah. We haven't got any any uh, training money actually for anyone to who is working in NHS to actually go any go for any profession specific courses or, or any training. And I think there's a real issue there for us to deal with. And as part of the review, Ara is setting up a, a group that's going to look specifically at education and training. You were asking Mr. Nicholson about where you think resources are lacking um, in hospitals, and I suppose and it made me think that one obvious area is elderly care, and I was just wondering, because you wanted to know, if there was any way you might consider addressing that for us, because 
you know, we, we could really use your help. The biggest challenge to the NHS the next 10 years is going to be the ageing population. That is, in one way, the success of healthcare systems, that we do have elderly patients to look after. Care of the elderly with dignity is what the NHS should be all about the next 10 years. Our greatest frustration is this sort of what we perceive to be a, a bureaucratic black hole in the middle that is the PCT and our lack of engagement with the PCT. These sorts of things that you just described very much depend on relationships between people. What I think staff need to hear is that we are going to be guaranteed some period of consolidation when we can actually get on and do the job that we're all here to do and we're all committed to doing without a huge number of further changes. This review is different. This is about engaging the staff, is clinically led and is driven locally. Our aspiration is to put people in the service in charge of the change. Perhaps the energies of primary care may be better used in the development of the services, or at least in the development of shifting the interface of those services back out into primary care. People have been wary of, of crossing a boundary and, and, and getting it wrong. There's also another view, which I've heard from primary care colleagues, is that they feel very restricted because at the end of the day the PCT has the ultimate power in whatever they're doing, so they don't feel empowered in doing it. Where's the next step for patient choice in secondary care and primary care for that matter? All patients should be able to get all their medicines from whomsoever they want, but actually that's not allowable under the current regulations. It is a unique question because yes. no one's ever asked us yes. it before. The service that you know clinically needs to move forward isn't within one of the targets. That can sometimes be very difficult to get ownership and, as you say, get clinical uh, leadership on and, and move those issues forward. You will face some challenges when it comes to quality and outcomes if you don't have the right governance structures. Very important we get that right. We really do welcome some confidence that that will be about patient outcomes and the quality of services that they expect because I know that's what these guys can deliver. Absolutely. Mm. We have concerns that we're not going to be able to deliver the quality that, that we would like to. So I think we should value the quality we have in primary care and promote it and not try and change it into something that it shouldn't be. Beside what you're doing, potentially there are opportunities from a patient perspective to deliver a wider set of services.